Hi everyone, this video will give you a brief overview of delirium and will help you understand how to differentiate delirium from dementia. For some background information, delirium is the acute onset change in a patient's mental state and it can occur in up to 30% of elderly patients. The etiology can be remembered using the mnemonic pinch me, which stands for pain, infection, nutrition, constipation, hydration, medication and electrolytes and specifically electrolyte imbalance. But what is the clinical presentation? Well, you have disturbed consciousness. There is emotional disturbance. So patients can present with depression, anxiety, or euphoria. There's psychomotor disturbances. So patients can be hyper or hypoactive. And you can have cognitive disturbances with things like disorientation and hallucinations. And key point is that there is a disturbed sleep cycle in patients with delirium. The two main types are hyper and hypoactive. So in hyperactive delirium, patient would be agitated, there will be hallucinations and delusions, whereas in, an, in a hypoactive delirium, uh, it can actually mimic depression. The patient is drowsy, apathetic um, and has disturbed sleep. So it is important to be aware of these two types. In terms of differentiating delirium from dementia, delirium has impaired consciousness, whereas none in dementia. You have fluctuation of symptoms, whereas symptoms tend not to fluctuate in patients with dementia. The onset is much more abrupt compared to dementia, which can typically present over months or years. And importantly, delirium is reversible whereas a dementia is not reversible. Hallucinations are much more common in delirium. They are less common in dementia, but they can still be present in dementia, especially in patients with Lewy body dementia, so it is something to still be aware of. And the sleep-wake cycle is severely disturbed in patients with delirium, and it is usually normal in dementia. But again, patients with, for example, Lewy body dementia can have disturbances in the sleep-wake cycle. So things you want to look out for are urinalysis to see whether there's things such as infection or hyperglycemia, sputum culture to see whether there is a chest infection, a full black count to identify infection or anemia, folate and B12 deficiency because these can also precipitate delirium, urea and electrolytes to see whether there is an acute kidney injury or things such as hyponatremia or hypokalemia. You can test the HbA1c to identify patients in hypoglycemia. You should also test calcium to see whether the patient is hyper or hypocalcemic. Patients who have hypercalcemic can um, have constipation, which is one of the causes of delirium. Liver function test to rule out any hepatic failure or hepatic encephalopathy. Inflammatory markers, and these can help identify whether there could be an underlying infection or inflammation present. Thyroid function tests uh, to see whether there is hyper or hypothyroidism. A chest x-ray as it can help with identifying things like pneumonia or heart failure. And an ECG um, as arrhythmias can also precipitate um, delirium. Now clinically, the 4AT test is very often used. Um, so it is very short test that takes about three to five minutes to do and it consists of four things the first one being alertness um, and in that you see whether the patient um, is fully with it whether they are agitated or whether they're very sleepy second part is the AMT4 which stands for age date of birth place so where they are currently in the hospital or the building and the current year Third is attention, so um, are they able to tell you the months of the year backwards um, and depending on how many they're able to do, um, the scores differ. And lastly, has there been an acute change or a fluctuating cause to the change in consciousness? Um, and after answering those four questions um, and scoring them accordingly, you will be able to see whether it is possible delirium or possible cognitive impairment or maybe both. So it is the clinical test used on the wards typically whilst you wait for all your blood tests to come back.
In terms of management, it is important to treat the underlying cause. However, it is important to talk about verbal and nonverbal de-escalation techniques, especially in patients who are agitated. You can use low-dose intramuscular or oral haroperidol. It is the first-line medical management, um, but it should be avoided in patients with Parkinson's or Lewy body dementia, as it can cause um, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Low-dose IMLRazepam can be used for patients with the above conditions, but again, the key point is that medication is not first-line management of delirium. You should try and de-escalate the situation before proceeding with medical management. And it is important to remember to not use benzodiazepines unless the delirium is caused by alcohol withdrawal. Lastly, I would like to talk about how to alter the environment to help with delirium. You can add clocks and calendars to help patients gain orientation. Have photos of family members around if they're able to. Put them in a side room if it's possible in your hospital. Uh, make sure to maintain the sleep hygiene and ensure that if a patient requires glasses or hearing aids that they have them with them as being unable to fully orientate themselves can exacerbate or precipitate the delirium in the first place. That is all I have for you today. I hope this was interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching.